Also, we want to welcome you to this awesome service tonight. I know it's different because you are watching from Facebook or YouTube, but that doesn't change, like I said a couple weeks ago, that doesn't change from praising God and doing what He's called us to do. So, before we go on, I want to encourage you guys, wherever room you're in, I encourage you to clap along, sing along, and get tuned in for what Pastor Jonathan has to speak tonight. Let's worship. Walking around these walls Where I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the bad For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your 
faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet.
Father God, you've never failed us yet. Your promise still stands through these difficult times, whether we're losing our minds during this quarantine or we're just dealing with a lot of stress with other situations in our life. But Father God, I pray uh, tonight that you um, give us peace of mind, peace of heart over any situation that we're going through right now, Father God. And I pray that you open our hearts and our minds because there is a word tonight that you have for us. And I just pray over Pastor Jonathan as he um, brings the words of wisdom tonight, Father God, that you, um, you bless him and anyone around him, Father God, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, Catalyst, thank you for worshiping with us tonight. Check out this video. Oh, hey, what's up, Catalyst? It's me, Micah, up here at the one and only Catalyst building, mopping up the floor with some holy water we got over there in the bucket. It makes it smell nice and uh, has a nice shine to it and whatnot. But, uh, you know, today I was gonna talk to you guys about having some peace and having anxiety because the world we are living in right now is kind of crazy. Nobody really knows what's going on. Uh, we're all stuck in our houses away from our friends and that's kind of sucky But you know it is what it is and it's what we got to work with and if I remember right uh, Being alive for 22 years. I can't recall the last time I had to be stuck inside uh, for months on end and You know it starts to add up with the days and you start questioning, you know what you can do, what you can't do, and you start worrying about, you know, are we ever gonna see our friends again? Is the world gonna end? And just, you know, some crazy thoughts. You never know. People come up with some crazy conspiracy theories about certain islands off by themselves and all sorts of celebrity stuff. It's just, it's, it's a good time, you know? It's kind of comical. It's kind of fun to listen to. But, you know, in the end, there's a certain level of peace that we all need to have within ourselves so we don't go crazy and literally lose our minds like some of these other people are that buy 56 rolls of toilet paper and then try to return it because they don't need it. It's a little too late for that, Susan, but that's okay. Nobody's mad, and you know. So yeah, we got crazy people buying up all the toilet paper and whatnot and all the essentials that we need to literally live. But you know, that's okay because you know what else we can live by? The Word of God. Now, let me tell you something. The Word of God, that's just a pr pretty spectacular thing if you ask me. And uh, I know for myself, I have prayed at least once a day this entire time that we've been in quarantine. And uh, I'm not saying that uh, it's a great idea, but uh, I will say it has brought a lot of peace upon myself. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's kind of a cheesy answer to come up with. But uh, we wouldn't say it if it didn't work, you know? Prayer is a powerful, powerful thing. And uh, you know, you start praying and you start doing some crazy things for Jonathan and Jennifer, like the dishes. But that's okay, because you know what? It's all out of love. And uh, if it wasn't for them, you know, we probably wouldn't all be here in this uh, wonderful building that we have. And uh, you better be thankful for this building that we were able to come to, well, I guess would be able to come to if uh, we weren't in this quarantine situation, but that's okay. Nobody's really that mad about it, because uh, we're out of school, we don't get to see our friends, but by God, we can play video games all day, we can uh, binge watch Grey's Anatomy all day, we can do whatever we want, really, except hang out with our friends, which is really what we all want to do. 
But you know, you know what else you can do? I'll tell you what, it's this crazy thing. It's a book you can read. We're like, oh, I don't want to read a book. Okay, this is a great book. It's a magical book where if you read and you do what this book says, you will have eternal life in heaven. And I'll tell you what, that's a crazy thing to think about. Having eternal life in heaven. Well, Michael, what's heaven? <laughs> Boy, let me tell you what heaven is. Heaven is a glorious kingdom that you can go to whenever we die. And yeah, it's kind of it's morbid to talk about because, you know, nobody wants to talk about death. We're all, you know, somewhat between 12 and 30 years old. And, you know, death is uh, far off from quite a few of us. And you don't want to talk about it. That's okay. We don't always have to talk about death. But the more you read about this uh, Bible thing I'm talking about, the more you're going to understand that the better you live your life like Christ and showing love and compassion to yourself and those around you, the more confident you're going to feel waking up every day because tomorrow's never guaranteed. And you know that song, is, Live Like You're Dying. It's essentially, it's a, it's a true song. It's a true statement. You got to live like you're dying because you never know. Crazy things happen in this world nowadays, and you got crazy people buying all the toilet paper that we just, you can't control what happens anymore. And you know, that's just, that's just part of life. That's just part of living your life. So tell you what, I say you go and you spend at least 30 minutes a day reading this magical book called the Bible. And let me tell you something. Those who say, well, I don't have a Bible. You got an iPhone, right? You got an <coughs> Android, right? I don't know who has an Android, but I'll, we'll pray for you. But uh, guess what? There's these things and they're called apps. And guess what? You would not believe it. I'll tell you what, there is an app for your Bible. It's crazy to think about, I know. I didn't come up with it. I wish I would have, but somebody did. And uh, you don't really have an excuse now. So a lot of people say, well, Micah, what's that beeping noise? Well, I'll tell you what, am I riding a hoverboard with cowboy boots? Uh, yes. Uh, is it the safest thing to be riding a hoverboard while filming this video? Probably not, but danger is literally in my name. It's Micah Danger Douthit, okay? And I have the faith of God in myself in this hoverboard that I will not fall. And that's okay. And these cowboy boots, you know, they're not the best uh, hoverboard wearing shoes, but that's okay. Cause we're not going super fast. But let me tell you about something called prayer. Oh boy. Prayer is an amazing thing. Okay. So what prayer is, is you have this uh, request in your life and uh, you pray about it. You talk to this really big, awesome guy, his name's God, and oh, that's a chair. And uh, lo and behold, within time and the right heart, your request for God will come into fruition. What's that, you say? Well, fruition is uh, when something isn't fully in sight yet, but is, uh, planted into somebody's soul and once that seed is planted and it is nurtured and is given life oh 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 so once that seed is given life it grows and with it comes this amazing wonderful feeling within you. I got to turn. I got, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's this amazing thing with God. And it allows you to have more faith within yourself and with God to know that he is there and he cares about you and he loves you. And yeah, there's going to be some prayers that you're going to have and some requests that you're going to have. They're going to be so far out and just shooting for the stars of, I want to be a millionaire. Well, you know what? You don't necessarily have to pray, God, I want to be a millionaire. Say, God, I want to have a successful life. I want to be a successful person when I get up. I want to have a good career that, that suits me and is able to provide for me and my family that I have. And that may not be you being a millionaire, 
but that's going to be your good heart of a prayer asking God to to provide for you to to not let you have to struggle in those times of just not knowing what's going on in your life and that's just that's the wonderful thing about prayer it brings upon a a certain peace that you're not alone in this crazy world that we're living in God is always around us and we don't ever really think about it unless we're around godly people or we're around people in church. But he is all around us every day. We wake up, he is, he's there. We go to sleep, he's there. We go to school, we go to work, he is there. He is always around us. It may not be him directly, but just his presence and his, his spirit is upon you at all times. He's always there protecting you and looking after you. And it's honestly, it's kind of foolish to not take advantage of this huge just library of resources that you have at your fingertips with your Bible app and just being able to listen to worship songs and just go into prayer for it. And so I just highly recommend if you're feeling anxious about some situations, really just go deep into prayer. And yeah, it's a cheesy answer because everybody says, well, you need to pray about it. But if it didn't work, nobody would say it, you know? I, I could write down at least about four pages of prayers I've prayed in this past year that have come to pass. And I am so thankful that Jonathan and Jennifer brought me in for Young Adults and Catalyst and really just broadened my, my look on what my life could be. And through prayer, I have gotten to where I am today because he has helped me so much with all these situations that I've been going through and all these rough times that I've been through. And if it wasn't for Jonathan and Jennifer and it wasn't for, for God himself just breathing life into me, I can honestly say I wouldn't be who I am today. And I am so blessed to be able to even sit here and just talk to you guys through a phone, even though we're not here in this huge empty building, which is kind of sad to look at right now, but because of them, I'm so blessed to just sit here and just talk to you guys and just kind of give you what's on my heart right now. And yeah, we miss y'all and we love you guys a lot. And I'm sure we'll be back here hopefully within a few weeks. Uh, but for now, that's <laughs> kind of what we're stuck with. And, you know, we got to be thankful for what we have, right? It could always be so much worse. And I'm just extremely thankful just to have just the influences that I do have. So really go into prayer if you're having anxiety, doubts, some sort of depression, because I know all those things are very real. And, you know, there was a time in my life where I was depressed. Okay, it was about a year ago before I started my journey that I'm on now. And everybody says, well, just don't be depressed. It's not, it's not easy, okay? Depression isn't something you just get up and walk away from. It's a shadow that just lingers over you and it feels like it just never leaves and it'll never get better. And it's, it's a hurtful feeling because you're always down about yourself, about something somebody else said, a feeling you have, you know, but just pray about it. And it's, prayer's not an immediate thing. It's not supposed to be. Prayer is a part of a lesson that you're supposed to learn through God. And if you don't pray for something, you're not gonna learn your lesson for what you need to learn to move on and use that for your testimony for somebody else. But that's why we have testimonies. Ooh. Spicy. So yeah, we have testimonies, right? Testimonies are part of our story and our journey that we've lived through of the battles and the victories that we have and the reason why we have those testimonies of in the hardships that we go through are so the people around us that we come in contact with that that need to hear your story need to be lifted up or need to hear that there is a way out and there is light at the end of the tunnel that's what you're there for that's why god allowed you to go through that pain and suffering knowing that he was doing it with you you were never alone in any hardship that you faced he was always there there's so many people in this world that think that, that God is against them because of the things they're going through. 
The way I've looked at it with the stuff that I've been through the past year and all the pain that I've been through is God never left my side. Yes, it hurt and it was very hard to get through what I had to get through, but because I was able to overcome it and I got to see victory through God, I feel so much better going into to situations in the future. All you have to do is reach out. He, he's waiting there with his hand, almost begging you just, just to, to talk to him and just hear, hear your voice of, of what's going on in your head. And yeah, he probably knows what's going on in your head, but unless you express how you feel to him, there's no way he can help you. It's like watching a friend fall, knowing that they're gonna fall, reaching your hand out and then not grabbing your hand and you just watch everything happen but you could have had so much more control if they would have just reached out. It's the same concept. God is watching us in the way that we live our lives here on earth. And he's, just, he's waiting. He's sitting there waiting for us to just call out his name so he can and help us through these situations and show us what, what love and compassion and mercy actually looks and feels like. I wish I could, I could share the feelings that I've had the past years with you guys because it, it's a roller coaster of emotions, but I'm a better person for me now because of it. And yes, I came into Catalyst as a broken man, but because of Jonathan, Jennifer, God, and all the friends that I have here at Young Adults, they have, have put me up on a strong foundation and continued to just lay bricks down and continue to build me up. And because of that, I am so strong within my faith now that whenever I go out in public or on mission trips, there's nothing that I feel like I can't do as long as I know God is there with me. And he always is. He's, he's never going to leave me by myself in any situation. He's always there. If I'm anxious about something, I'll pray. If I'm worried about something, I'll pray. If I'm, I'm happy or joyful, I'll just pray and just give thanks for what he's given me. And that's, that's really, that's what it's all about is just getting deep in prayer within yourself. Because whenever you don't have those friendships that you're able just to go to every single day, you have prayer, you have your worship music, and there's been a study that's shown people who listen to worship music feel the presence of God around them and they feel just at peace with whatever they're going through. And that's because with everything that we say and do within our worship or praying, that's God speaking into us. There's so many thoughts that I've had in prayer. I'm just like, I never would have thought about that ever in a million years. But God was with me in that moment. He spoke to me. He said, this is what you really need to pray about because you're holding back and I know you are. And I was. There were so many things that I was holding back because I was scared of what the outcome might be. And God said, you just need to let go because I have this in my hands and you need to trust me. And I said, okay, I will trust you with whatever my future may hold. And because of that, I have excelled any expectation of what my life could have been and I'm so thankful for what it is now. And I know that if I didn't just let go and just give everything to God, I would, I would be a million step, steps back right now. And I probably, I wouldn't be a leader. I probably wouldn't have gone on the mission trip last year. I may not have some of the friends that I have now. And so by trusting God and just giving your life to God, it will literally slingshot you steps far beyond what you ever thought you would have ever been able to reach. Okay, so here, we're at the end of the video, right? I got this eight ball, okay? I'm gonna shoot this ball, it's gonna hit the eight ball, but I'm gonna do it blindfolded, right? We're gonna make it into a challenge. If I'm able to hit this ball and hit the eight ball in, while being blindfolded, you guys have to invite five friends to our next catalyst that we have. And uh, you have to do it because this is extremely difficult and there's no other option. So when I make this, uh, you have to invite five friends with you to Catalyst, 
All right, no exceptions because we've seen the uh, followers on Catalyst and they have multiplied. Uh, so you kind of, you out of luck, okay? So start inviting friends. All right, I am blindfolded. I cannot see a thing. Um, okay, here we go. So when I make this, you guys have to invite five friends to Catalyst. Okay, but in all seriousness, there were some, some verses I wanted to go over with you guys. And the first one is gonna be Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When it talks about requests, that's meaning anything that's really heavy on your heart, kind of like what we were talking about earlier. But don't have a selfish prayer. Don't pray to benefit yourself. And I know it's, it's kind of a, a strange saying, and it, it kind of doesn't make sense to some people because it didn't make sense to me either. But as I would take it is don't pray to be a millionaire. Pray for you to be successful and to provide for your family, kind of like we talked about earlier. Don't pray for a million dollars, but pray to be successful. Pray to be that provider that you're needed to be. You may not be called to be some billionaire that's gonna produce just millions and millions of dollars and be able to tithe as much as you want, and that's okay. We're all called to be different things, but don't, don't have a selfish prayer to just benefit for yourself. That those are the prayers that I'm not gonna say it won't get answered, but those are the prayers that are gonna have most likely the longest time between of when something might happen and when something won't happen. And then the next verse is gonna be Isaiah 54:10, And it says, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. So pretty much what's that saying is, you're gonna go through hell and back in your lifetime. Some way or another, you're gonna most likely hit rock bottom. I'm not saying everybody's gonna hit rock bottom. I know I did, but that doesn't mean you will. But with that being said, it says, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. God has so much love for us, it is unfathomable to even try to think about. There is nothing that we don't do that he will not forgive us for as long as we ask. You have to repent for your sins that you do have and don't recommit them. It's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. You do it for so long and it, it's gonna get to the point where you're gonna just have it inside yourself to not even think to ask for forgiveness because you're gonna put it inside yourself and let the enemy in and the enemy's gonna sit there and tell you, you're not good enough, you're gonna do it again no matter what you say, no matter what happens, it's gonna happen because you're not good enough. If you repent for those sins and ask for forgiveness and God gives it to you, don't just take it for granted. Forgiveness is such a, a cherishable thing in this world that normal people don't just give it out. I know for myself, I'm a very forgivable person and I sit there and I, I give forgiveness out like Oprah Winfrey gives out TVs. It may come back to bite me in the end, I don't really know, but it's, it's not my call to make. I forgive people not because God said to, but because for me it's not worth holding on to the grudges and just the hatred that comes with it. I don't want that in my life anymore, and so I give forgiveness just because for me, it brings peace. It allows me to focus on the bigger things that I can't control. And I know it's kind of weird to, to think about, but the way that I interact with somebody, I can control. But the way they interact with me, I can't control. I have a little bit of say in my what happened, but as long as they know that I forgive them for whatever they may have done, or if they forgive me for whatever I have done, there's gonna be that peace and understanding knowing that, okay, like, I know what happened wasn't okay, but they forgave me for it, or I forgave them for it. 
And so you're going to have that bond within yourself and with that person. And it's going to allow you to grow and be stronger just within yourself. And then you're going to have that presence of God within you because he forgives the way that Oprah Winfrey forgives out TVs. And that's, that's the way it is. I'm not saying everybody needs to be called to love and forgive so easily, but don't harness on hate and don't hold on to grudges because it makes everybody bitter in the end and nobody likes to be bitter. Uh, I know that from experience. It's not fun. Um, but pretty much that's kind of all I have for you guys. Um, we miss y'all so much. Uh, I can't wait for this place to be filled back up with 200 something teenagers. And uh, if there's anything you guys need, please just reach out to us through social media, through our group me page. We have just something, whatever you're going through, just a prayer request. Please, please, please reach out to us. We can talk to you. We can pray for you. Just kind of have a thoughtful mind of whatever you may be going through. Um, just don't sit in your room or sit wherever you're at and just think about things that are going wrong. Find the joyfulness of what's happening. Go out with your family, go on a walk, not too close to people, uh, but just enjoy this time of solitude you have and really get into your Bible and just pray and really just kind of figure out who you are within yourself. So whenever we do come back and whenever y'all go back to school, you're gonna be stronger than you thought you would have been if things were kind of normal how they are now, or I guess, the way things would have been, I guess. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. We love y'all. We'll see you guys soon. Stay healthy and uh, you guys take care. Hey, what's up Catalyst? I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as me. A conversation with Micah. So many things that you can learn from that and I really pray that you received it, that you deposited it deep down in you. And one of the most important things that I think he talked about is all the resources available to you guys. Can I tell you right now that whatever negative thoughts, emotions, and things you're going through mentally and spiritually, you do not have to do it alone. But as Micah said, let's lean into God's word. You know, this whole season that we've gone through, many, many things that we go through and that we'll continue to go through in the future, we can look at those as spiritual battles. And I, and I have here with me an actual sword. And in the spiritual realm, God's word represents this, a sword that allows you to battle things that come from the enemy. That it's so important that you lean on God's word and deposit kingdom content into your spirit. That's how we become better equipped. We don't want to enter these seasons ill-equipped with no weapons, but God has given us so many things that we can use to fight in these spiritual battles. I've been saying it and I've been praying it. I want us to be so equipped that we come back strong, that we come back weaponized and that nothing can stop what God's doing in and through us. So let this season that we're in be purposeful, continue to lean into God, continue to pursue him and draw from him. Because as Matthew said in his devotional yesterday, which I really hope you had a chance to listen, that let's pray and let's enter into a new normal. We didn't go through all this quarantine just to go back to the same old thing. Let's come back powerful. So that's kind of what I want us to do tonight to wrap things up. I don't want to just pray for you. I want us to pray together. I'm going to put a prayer up on the screen and I want us to pray this together as an audible community, wherever you're at, grandma's house, your couch, your bed. Let's pray this out because when we speak, there is authority through the name of Jesus when we pray. Let's pray together. Father, right now I pray that you ignite in me a fire that burns bright for you. God, that I would have a passion to serve you and those around me. God, that not only would I experience your love, but that those around me would experience your love through me. God, I pray you give me strength. God, that you would equip me. And God, that you would continue to bless me, my family, Cornerstone Church, and Catalyst Ministry. God, I'm thankful for all you're going to do in the future. 
And God, I'm thankful for what you're doing right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey man, that's all I got. So I hope to see you soon. Keep watching for Student Devos on Catalyst MWC. And like I said, let's get equipped, baby. Let's go to war. Let's get in God's word. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Peace.